Hi, Nathan here from The Pop Revolution, and in this video, I'll be going through a few quick ways to make your score look professional in Finale. Though Finale has made it pretty easy to put notes in and add expression and articulations, it does take a bit of work to get your scores looking professional. A lot of composers spend a lot of money hiring copyists to do their formatting for them, but if you already own Finale, you could probably save a lot of money by doing it yourself. The truth is that it's not that hard. Just to be clear, this is not a comprehensive tutorial on copying, and time doesn't allow for me to cover all the nooks and crannies of formatting, but what I will be talking about in this video should really help you get going. I'll do my best to listen to your questions and comments, and possibly put another formatting video up answering those. So, we'll jump right into Finale. This is a vocal piece that has piano and string quartet, and as you can see, it's not looking super awesome right now. There's only one system per page, the piano part squeezing into the vocal part, and overall, this is not a very appealing score. So, I'll be using this score to show you my process to getting it looking much, much nicer. First off, when I start editing and formatting, I don't do it in page mode. That is what the mode finale will be set to automatically when you open it. Instead, I use scroll mode. To get there, you can either go to the top of your finale tab to view and change the mode like so, or you can just click Command E. Now, I have all my dynamics and expression markings in place, but as you can see, they don't really look too great. So in scroll mode, what's nice is that you can really focus on making things line up well. The first thing to do in making your score look nice is lining up all of your expressions the best you can. It'll make things look a lot less cluttered and look a lot more symmetrical. You don't want notes running into your dynamic markings or expressions, so make sure you move them low enough that you have some room to work with. This is a bit tedious, but it really is necessary in getting things where they need to be. So try to be as meticulous as possible. If things are looking too squeezed in your window, then go to your staff tool and you can use the handles on the top left of each part and give yourself more room like so. Since we are in scroll mode, these save changes won't affect your page view version. Once you have more room overall, you can start going through and making sure that things are lining up really well. The dynamic markings have spacing lines that will help you line them up with the markings in the same part as well as in other parts to make things look really clean. Your expressions, such as hairpins, should all be the same length in every part if each part is following the same dynamic change. I don't want my cello crescendo to have a different length than my viola crescendo. It's sloppy, and believe it or not, those small things are pretty noticeable. So I'll go through and make those changes. Great, now you can see I've lined things up the best I can in scroll mode, and it is already looking quite a bit better. Now that I've done that in scroll mode, I can go to page view using shortcut command E, or go into the tab above to change the view. The first thing we're gonna do is go to the page layout tool in the main tool palette. This is really where we can start making some super noticeable changes that will really make things look nice. With this tool, I'll go up to the page layout tab on the top of the toolbar and scroll down to resize page. This will allow me to change the size of the entire page by a percentage. Make sure that the hold margins option is selected, and also make sure that the page range is from one through the end of the piece. If you are on, say, page three and try to do this, it'll automatically assume you don't want to resize pages one and two. So make sure you have all of your pages being altered together. How much you resize is somewhat up to taste, but I typically resize down somewhere between 80 to 85% as a starting point. So I'll start with 85% and see how things look. I typically make it so that the page resize affects all parts and the conductor score, so you have that option selected in the dialog box. Now notice that I still can't fit two systems on each page at 85%, and one of the big reasons I want to resize it is because it allows me to fit more on each page. I would like to have two systems per page, so I'll go ahead and give 80% a shot. I think that looks pretty good, and you'll notice that you can fit more on each page as a result. This is nice because doing this will make your score look more professional by having a bit of a smaller and neat print than big and bulky. 100% page size really does look a bit like something out of a children's piano lesson book that has a much bigger print. Regardless of what you're composing for, most musicians prefer, generically, more music on each page than bigger notes. This makes it so that they don't have to turn pages as much. For now, we're going to get out of page layout and go to our measure tool. This will be how I will determine how many measures will go on each system. A lot of times I'll go to utilities and choose fit majors somewhere between four to six majors per stave to give me a starting point. But it's definitely not necessary unless your systems get completely squeezed together with too many majors per system. In this piece, there are several times that the vocalist doesn't sing a, for a good amount of time. So instead of just having a blank stave taking up space, I can go to my staff tool and highlight the empty stave and go to the top tab to your staff tool and click on hide unused staves. Now, if there is even one major in the system that has notes in it, then Finale will not allow you to hide it. So, if you need to bump a major up or down a system, you can do that in order to hide the stave. I'll get into that in a second. 
Whether you hide unused majors early on or later in the process is completely up to you, but you probably will have to make tweaks along the way to make things look nice. For me, I'll go back and forth between my major tool and staff tool as I'm formatting. From here, we'll go back to the major tool, and I will start moving majors around using the arrow keys to fit things the way I want. The up and down keys are all I'll need. The down key will move whatever major in those following it on the system down a system, and the up key does the opposite, moves them up a system. So I'll start moving things around to get them looking as neat as possible. If you notice that a particular major seems squeezed, but you have room in the system, then just use the handles on the top right and left of the major to change its size. If there's a whole note, for example, that major does not need to be very large, but if there are a lot of 16th notes, you'll need to be having more space. Use your judgment to decide how much space you want. It also takes some practice to figure out exactly how much space you want or need. You'll want to take performance into consideration, so try to avoid nasty page turns like a huge run right before a page turn, or if it's for some other instrument you don't want a challenging lick right before a page turn. A lot of times it's unavoidable, but do your best to take that into consideration. When I format my individual parts, I'll need to think about that for the piano vocal part especially since there's that a lot of that happening. I don't want my pianist to be struggling to turn pages. and. I'm usually the one playing piano on my own pieces, so I don't want page turns that are hard. So I'm going to go through and start adjusting my measures and deciding how many measures I want per system. Now that I'm finished with that, you can see the score is looking much, much better than it initially looked. It's clean, properly spaced, and well organized. The last thing we need to do is adjust our total system sizes and potentially adjust how many systems are on a page. We'll go back to our page layout tool, and from there, we can simply drag systems around to give them more or less space between each other system. Or if we move the bottom one down further than the margin, it'll go to the following page. The same thing happens if I drag the top system too far upward. It'll go to the previous page. I'll go through and give myself a good amount of space to work with. I don't want them too close, but we also want to find a good balance so that there's as much on the page as possible without much clutter. So I'll quickly get that taken care of now. Now that we're pretty much finished, there's one last thing you can add if you want, and that is system dividers. It isn't always necessary, in a lot of music you won't see them, but in choral music, orchestral music, and larger ensembles, it's really normal to see. So to get those placed, you go to the top tab to plugins bar, go to the second to last option, scoring tools, and choose score system divider. This will prompt a few options. You will want them on all pages, which is automatically set, but you can also change the font and how they are placed. I'll just stick with what the preset is to show you how they look. Now, once you have them placed, you can use the selection tool to move them if necessary. This should be the very last thing you add because they will not change as easily with your score as you make changes. So make sure to do this the last. And we now have a really great looking score that is ready to go. And you can use all of these same steps to format individual parts too. Quickly, I'll show you how you can make multi-major rests. Go to your document tab, edit part. I'll just go to violin one to show you. I have four majors here that there's nothing to play. So I'll go ahead and make a multi-major rest. You can use the measure tool or the selection tool to do this, it doesn't really matter. I will left click on the measure or control click. This will give me a pull down window and go to multi measure rest option and click create. There you go. Another way to clean things up. Okay, since we resize the pages, not only for the conductor score, but also for the parts, they will already be the right size. But if you need to change their size, you can still make that adjustment in page layout. Just make sure it's only for that part in the dialog box so you don't resize the parts you've already formatted. So now all you need to do is make your parts look neat and clean. And that is a quick way you can make your scores look professional without a copyist. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and feel free to leave any questions or comments below and I will do my best to get back to you.